let's talk about the torch infection. So again, nonspecific signs and symptoms. The vignette they gave you was classic meningitis. This baby had her HSV2 was what was in the PCR. Let's talk a little bit about the torch infections. And there's the mnemonic for torch. Okay. A nice clue is that the majority of the torch infections infections are acquired in the first or second trimester. Most of these babies have symmetrical intrauterine growth retardation. Symmetrical. The mnemonic is T is toxoplasmosis. O stands for other, but we use that for syphilis. So make that O, syphilis. R is congenital rubella infection. C is cytomegalovirus, which is the most common of the torch infections. And H is herpes simplex infection. So let's talk about these. Now, for the most part, most of these torch infections have similar, okay, most of these torch infections presentations. Many of these patients have IUGR, jaundice, developmental seizures, eye findings, okay? And the best way to tell them apart is to get torch titers. So they're very similar in presentations, so the best thing to do is to get torch titers. Toxoplasmosis is from maternal ingestion of these cysts. The cysts occur when you eat undercooked meat. The classic example is steak tartare, which is ground up raw filet mignon, okay, which costs a lot of money. They don't even cook it. It's raw. You pay a lot of money for that, and you're ingesting the cysts because the meat is undercooked, obviously, okay? And you can also get it, particularly in this country, when you handle what they say called kitty litter, kitty litter. So if you're pregnant and you have a cat, don't handle the kitty litter. Let somebody else do it. Define, again, usually is infection in the first trimester. And those are the findings. They can have chorioretinitis, hydrocephalus, and the intracranial calcifications are kind of just scattered everywhere. The treatment is to treat the patient, the mom, during the pregnancy. If you treat with spiromycin, there is a much lower risk of transmitting it to the uh, 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 transplacentally, okay? The babies, when they're born, will be treated with a sulfonamide. But we know that sulfa drugs early on in life can cause bone marrow suppression, and so you will add leucovorin as part of the treatment regimen for a newborn. More of a step three, no extra charge for that. And that is a hydrocephalus. In this case, secondarily to, okay, look at the size of that head. That's not, that's not asymmetric, okay? That's not that the brain has been spared. Okay, that's hydrocephalus. Okay. Outcomes. They can have visual impairment, psychomotor retardation. This baby looks like it's already got scissoring of the legs, and it can have seizures and severe developmental delays. Congenital rubella. Oh, isn't that a beautiful show, shot? Okay, so look, there's the, there is the aorta. There is the pulmonary artery, and look, there is the ductus arteriosus that's still open. So congenital rubella. Acquired rubella is not a problem. Congenital rubella is huge clue, pearl. Do you have a necklace yet? I've given you so many pearls on day one. I'm spoiling you already, okay? Blueberry muffin spots. Sometimes you'll see this with CMV, but for the exam, Try to relate blueberry muffin spots with congenital rubella. 
Okay. Empiric treatment for sepsis and meningitis, yes, is ampicillin and amigoglycoside in the neonate. In the neonate. Okay. So look for blueberry muffin spots. The babies will have jaundice, and they're rightly not blue. They're kind of reddish. They look like cranberries. Everybody calls them blueberry muffins. They can have, ooh, this should go out to the side. Cardiac issues like a PDA or peripheral pulmonary artery stenosis. But there's the PDA I'm showing you. Also, they can have cataracts and hearing loss. Now, all babies get hearing screens anyway, but remember the association with congenital rubella. Outcomes. Hearing loss, growth retardation, microcephaly, mental retardation. Okay, so how do we prevent this from happening? Make sure that mom is immunized. Very important. Because once the babies are born with congenital rubella, there's no treatment. This is all secondary to the reaction, the response. Okay, here are, don't they, those don't look like blueberries, those look like cranberries, but this is congenital rubella. This is the blueberry muffin baby, and you see that white area? That is a congenital cataract, so there's another one there, from congenital rubella syndrome. So prevent with immunizations of the moms. Okay, the next one, the C of torts. I did the T. I haven't gotten to the O yet. I did the T. We did the R. This is the most common of the of the torch infections is CMV, okay? And it can be primary or reactivation in the mom. And again, they can have calcifications. In this case, with, with uh, Toxo, the calcifications can be anywhere. And those calcifications can certainly be a focus for uh, seizures. In cytomegalovirus, the calcifications tend to be periventricular. So the way I remember it is CMV periventricular calcifications. They can have hydrocephalus, eye findings, microcephaly, seizures, mental retardations, just like the titers. That's the best way of figuring this out. And there's your outcomes, okay? But look at this, all periventricular. There's hydrocephalus and periventricular calcifications. The babies that have CMV will be shedding for a while, but then they stop shedding, so they're not contagious to anybody. They shed into urine. Here's the H of the torch, herpes. Okay, Herpes can present in three different ways. The baby can have what's known as, they call SEM, skin, eyes, and mouth lesions, keratoconjunctivitis and skin lesions. And actually, actually, of the, of the various manifestations, this is the most benign. The babies that have skin, eye, and mouth usually present at around 5 to 14 days, but have a very good chance of normal development, 94 to 95%. They can have CNS manifestations at about three to four weeks. This baby was at about two weeks. Or they can have disseminated, which is really bad, and disseminated presents earlier. There is a little overlap with the skin, eyes, and mouth, but disseminated presents a lot sicker. And even properly treated, these babies have a high mortality rate. So of the three, the best one to have is this one. The diagnosis is made on PCR, like we did with our baby. So rather than titers, PCR. And the treatment is to start acyclovir as soon as possible. They require about 21 days worth of acyclovir. The outcomes depends. Outcomes depend on the type. Okay, but they can have blisters, developmental delays. Like I said, even properly treated, especially the disseminated, can die. This baby had its eye exam today, and I don't know what the results were because I'm not on service right now. I'll track it down. I'll let you know tomorrow. Now, 
here's another thing about the herpes. Sometimes the moms are, they could be a primary infection and they're asymptomatic, so they don't even know. The baby is delivered vaginally, the baby gets the disease. Okay? Elective C section is the best way to deliver the baby. But please remember, that is not a 100% guarantee that you will avoid the disease. You had OB, I'm sure they mentioned it. So C section, electively, is there's active disease, is the way to go, but it's not a 100% guarantee. You have something similar. In, those are the three kinds of. It just it just summarizes what we've discussed. It talks about how they present, when they present. The diagnosis is the same for all of them, with PCR being. cutaneous manifestations here and here we have some in, some scarring that occurred from intrauterine uh, exposure SEM mouth syphilis syphilis is the O or other some people use the term torches and they would use as syphilis okay and here we see snuffles, snuffles, and look what happens. Look at the corners of the mouth. What do we call those? Chocolate, chocolate, chocolate time. Ragads. These are ragads. Okay? So, yes, this snuffles, very good, Alejandro. These snuffles. That fluid is chalk of spirochetes. That's not just a runny nose. That has tons of going to be there. Wear a glove. Yeah, here's a chocolate. There you go, Alejandro. Okay? Because it's going to be pretty tough to explain to your significant other that you got syphilis from an infant. Try to, try to talk your way out of that one. Okay? All right, so there is transplacental transmission. This one is later. Even though I mentioned the other ones are first or second trimester, this is later. And there are two kinds of manifestations. Early manifestations, which are in the first two years of life, and that's when we see the snuffles, the regards, fever, anemia, failure to thrive, things like that. And then there's the later manifestations. After two years of age, that's when we see the, the uh, skeletal stuff, the uh, clutton joints, the saddle nose, all that stuff is seen, okay? So we see snuffles, rashes, jaundice, okay? With the early and with the late, we're going to see Hutchinson's teeth, clutton joints, saber shin, silar nose, and I, th I think I have a picture coming up, okay? Early and late. Skeletal will be late, except for maybe a periostitis. But all the skeletal stuff is late, like the saddle nose. There you go. Like a clutton joints. Like Hutchinson's teeth. Okay? So once again, this is congenital syphilis. And the diagnosis is going to be made with Finding treponemes, that's the most accurate, but you can also do an FTA, fluorescent treponemal antibody, okay? If you suspect congenital syphilis, you should always, always do a spinal tap on the newborn to make sure that there's not neurosyphilis, okay? And the treatment will be penicillin for all. Okay. And let's look at varicella, kind of a torch, okay? So varicella,
years, okay, when the delivery occurs, days before delivery, or if the mom breaks out three days after delivery, then you're dealing with neonatal, neonatal, and baby with varicella zoster immune globulin. If the mother developed varicella five days before to two days after delivery. So if the, if the mom develops varicella at day five after delivery, you don't give this egg to the baby. If the mom develops varicella one to two days after delivery or the day before delivery, when the baby, the baby will get varicella zoster immune globulin. That's the neonatal, okay? The congenital form, the congenital form, is what you see in that picture. You'll have some limb malformations and deformities and microcephaly. And usually that's a maternal infection in the first or second trimester. Now remember, we could prevent this because now we have varicella vaccines. So we have to make sure that all of mom's in, uh, uh, immunizations are up to date. For congenital, you don't do anything. Congenital, you don't do anything. Okay. So this, again, the varicella vaccine is very effective in preventing varicella, okay? So this is, in summary, a little, little, nice little chart that talks about the torch syndromes and things that you'll see and the diagnosis. Once again, for the majority of them, you get torch titers, although for, for herpes, you can get PCR. And for syphilis, you get the fluorescent treponemal antibody. Okay? But the others are going to be toxo, CMV, rubella. You're going to get titers of IgM.